Hi, this is David. In the last couple of videos, I showed you the basics of Docker and images and containers and how to create an image and a container based on that image and to manage those things using Docker. Uh, if you want to review that, those are in videos 126 and 127. Uh, containers are great. They, they're they really fast to start up, and if one of them gets destroyed or if you decide to scale down and scale back up, they, they start up really quickly. But they have one disadvantage. If an image is destroyed or if a container is destroyed and then recreated, it loses any stateful information. Anything you've written to that container after it was created is lost. Because by default, containers are stateless, which is one of the things that makes them so fast. However, there is a way around that. We can use something called volumes and attach a volume to a container in order to save stateful information. And that's what I'm going to do right now. We'll start with a quick review. I've, I've installed Docker Desktop, which gives me access to Docker locally. It gives me the Docker, Docker CLI on my local Windows machine. And I, if you look at this here right now, I've got Docker image LS. There are no images, but I'm in a folder that has a simple node application and a Docker file. So I can, from this directory, I can execute Docker build and give it the name DGR slash app one colon 1.0 for the current directory. And this will build an image based on this really simple node directory that's in this current folder. Docker image LS shows, there it is right there. It's got an ID of B02 something. Um, and I can also build a, um, a container based on that image. Docker container run, give it the name app one. This image I happen to know is um, running on port, has a web application running on port 8081. So what I'll do is I'll say eight map local 8000 to port 8081. And point that at this image, DGR app one colon 1.0. And what that will do is it'll create an image. Let me do this again here. Uh, Docker container. And there it is, it's up and running right here. Um, I should have done that in detached mode, but that's okay. Control C got me back into here and it is up and running. Um, the problem is that that uh, if I want to put anything, store anything stateful in here, it'll do destroy it. Let me just show you how that works. If I go, I, there is a command that I haven't showed you yet, which is allows me to execute a command on Docker uh, inside of a container. This command is the docker exec dash IT. So this says, Execute interactively on the app one container, the sh command. The sh command is just the bash prompt. And depending on what version of uh, Linux you're using, that may be, say, bash, you may need the path. But sh works. There's a prompt right there. And if I say echo um, stateless to stateless.txt right here, then you can see that in addition to the two files that um, are make up my application, there's also inside of here stateless.txt. I'm here inside of the container. Uh, let me get out of this. Control P, Control Q is the shortcut key to get out of that prompt. I'm back at the host machine here. And if I destroy this container, Docker container RM, uh, actually, I need the name, I need to reverse, Docker. Container RM, this one is 309 something. 309 is enough. I have to do a dash force, which will stop it and delete it. So now there, the container is gone. And if I recreate the same container again, like this, once again, I go into this bash prompt here and do ls. Well, this file is stateless. File is gone. It, when it recreated the container, it rec recreated only those parts of it that were part of the image, not anything that was done after that. So that's a problem, potentially. I'll exit out of here. Let me delete this one more time. Now container E0A something, so I'll remove uh, E0A. 
And now I'm going to recreate the container, but this time I'll use a volume. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a volume, and there's a command docker volume create, and I just give it a name. I assign it the name. In this case, I'll call it vol1. That's fine. So now when I, when I create this container based on this image, I want to add one more thing to it. I'm going to do this first of all in uh, dash E. We can detach mode, so I'll get my command prompt back right away. But also, I'm going to add a dash V and a map on my source machine. I'll map vol1, the volume that I just created, to this folder, var opt project. I didn't put any folder that I want in here, and that will be a volume inside of the container that will be mount in which I will mount my volume. So anything I write to that folder will actually be mounted to the volume on my host machine. So let me do that right here. It did this, and now again I have a Docker container. I have one container running, um, six six eight eight C something. It's been up for about four seconds. It's called App One. And I can now I can connect to that, execute a bash command on this. Here I am in here, and I'm going to inside of the container. I'm going to switch to that directory var op project. There's nothing in here now, but if I say echo stateful of to uh, um, abc.txt, how about that, right here. Now I've got a file in here, and that file is also in the volume. And I can show you that by because on my local machine, by default in Windows, that maps to this folder right here. It's on the Windows substance for this, WSL dollar sign slash Docker desktop data slash version pack data slash community slash Docker slash volumes. This is where all of the volumes are stored by default on a Windows machine, and under here you can see vol1, that's my volume. There's a, an underscore data folder, and inside of there, there's the file. And I can actually open up, this is on my host machine, not in the container, and if I open this up, you can see that it is got the stateful stuff in it. Pretty cool. I can also see it in Docker Desktop. If I go down here to volumes, you'll see there's the volume right there. It was created about a minute ago, and if I click on it, there's some information about it, but here's the data right here. So a couple of ways that I can see what's going on inside of that volume. But I'll show you one of the big advantages of this. I'll do Control P, Control Q. Now I'm outside of the container. I'm back on my host machine, and I still have I have one container running right there. Let me get rid of that container. Doc. Docker container RM688 dash force. So now it's gone. I've got no containers left, and I'll recreate it. I'll recreate it using the exact same command as before. So this is not an uncommon thing that you would do. Something fails, you want to recreate it and get that thing back up and running again so your app is still running. The difference this time is it's running now. But let's now connect to this new machine, this new container, using a bash prompt. And again, we'll change to that directory, which was, um, oh, this right here, var opt project. So let me change to that directory right here, like so. Like so. And now I list that, and there's my abc.txt. It's still there, even though this is a brand new container. Let me get out of here, and I'll show you an another cool thing is that, yeah, I've got one container running based on that image. What if I create multiple containers based on that image, but all pointing to the same volume? I can certainly do that. I'll create one called app2. I'll map set of port 8000, I'll map 8001, I'll do the same thing, app three, like that. Now I've got three containers, they're all distinct, 
but they all point to the same volume. So which is really cool about this is that I can connect to one of these other ones. Here, let's go to app two. Like this and change to that same, let's see, var opt project right here. And it also has this. So any new container that I use that's points to that volume has access to this. And I can do this. I can say echo another file, another .txt. And now I've got two files on this volume. And if I go back over to here and refresh this, that file shows up here. If I go back over to Docker desktop and refresh it this way, it shows up here as well. So I'm going to just exit out of that bash prompt, and I will show you um, a couple really useful commands here. I've already shown you Docker volume ls to list them all. Right now I've only got one volume, uh, but I can also remove a volume. Docker volume rm vol1. Now this won't work because there is a container that's attached to it's using that volume, so I won't be able to remove it. It tells me error volume is in use. I'd have to remove all of these in order to do that. In fact, why don't I do that here? I'll say docker container rm for b dash force and um, cf dash force and uh, 6d so i'll get rid of these three containers and now i could now i could remove that explicitly or i can do docker volume prune which it warns me but what this will do is it'll remove any volumes that are not being used by a container and vol1 is not being used by a container so it's gone docker volume ls there are no more volumes left. So in this video, I've shown you how to maintain stateful information in a container using volumes in Docker. This is David. Thank you for watching. Yeah.